The Hebrew name of the second Old Testament book, Shemoth, was taken from its opening phrase, these are the names. The book's title from the Greek seems more appropriate, Exodus or the way out. The Exodus of the Jews from Egypt is the fulfillment of Genesis 50, 25, spoken by Joseph hundreds of years before. In Genesis, God called the patriarchs individually, but in Exodus, he calls a whole nation to be his. His call was threefold. Let my people go that they may serve me, that they may hold a feast to me, and that they may do sacrifice. He still seeks those who desire to serve, worship, and fellowship with him. The book naturally falls into three main sections. Part one gives Israel's national foundation in chapters one to 18, as we see the increase of the people in Egypt and their deliverance out of Egypt. God saves his people. Part two presents their legislative foundations in chapters 19 to 24, in the giving of the covenant of law at Sinai and its ratification by the people. God separates his people. Part three displays their religious foundation in chapters 25 to 40, constructing the tabernacle and its provisions of grace through the priesthood and sacrifices. God sanctifies his people. A holy God shows how he can live in the midst of a sinful people while still maintaining his righteousness. This, of course, is fully demonstrated by the cross of Calvary. Sidlow Baxter, writing in Explore the Book, says, We have good reason to approach our study of it with real eagerness, for never was there a more striking or vital record. Is there in all history a more amazing spectacle than the Exodus? A more august and solemn revelation of God than at Sinai? A more significant piece of architecture than the Israelite tabernacle? A greater human figure than the man Moses? A more influential national epic than the founding of the Israel theocracy? All these are found in this second book of scripture." End quote. Two great themes emerge in the book of Exodus, the two essentials for a relationship with God. The first is redemption in chapters one through 15, and the second is consecration in chapters 16 through 40. These can be seen in the parallels throughout the book. In chapters one and two, Israel is preserved in Egypt. In chapters 15 through 17, Israel is preserved in the desert. In chapters three and four, Moses is instructed at Sinai. In chapters 21 to 31, Israel is instructed at Sinai. In five through seven, the confrontation is with Pharaoh. In 17 through 18, the confrontation is with Amalek. The power of God is manifested in the 10 plagues in chapters seven through 11. The holiness of God is manifested in the 10 commandments in chapters 19 and 20. In chapters 12 and 13, judgment falls, but Israel is spared and redeemed. In chapters 32 to 34, judgment falls, but Israel is disciplined, then restored. In chapters 13 and 14, God's presence is displayed in the Red Sea crossing through the destruction of the enemy. While in chapters 35 to 39, God's presence is displayed in the tabernacle through the construction of the dwelling of God. When safe on the other side of the sea, Israel raised their song of redemption in chapter 15, whereas the act of consecration that concludes the book in chapter 40 results in the glory of the Lord filling the tabernacle. And there you have a scripture snapshot of the book of Exodus.